Hi friend, welcome to Tiger Resilience, where we offer addiction solutions for family members and friends like you who are struggling with a loved one who is dealing with an addiction. And I'm so glad that you could be here today because we're going to dive into a very powerful topic that every family who has either come through recovery or is dealing with a present person who is struggling with an addiction will encompass on their journey. And that is addiction and denial. And we're not talking about the River Nile and denial, in a sense, and that's a little pun that's used in a recovery community. We are really talking about a serious subject here. And here's, we're going to break this apart into a few different areas. But the beginning is I really want to just discuss first, you know, what is addiction in a very simple terms, okay? An individual who has created a substance use or a substance abuse problem generally will build up a tolerance, and that tolerance creates a dependency. And that dependency is where there's a psychological and and the biological, physiological need in order to keep doing the substance. Addiction crosses over, in other words, they cross that line when the behaviors start to shift in order to maintain and to obviously justify and rationalize that addiction. And that's where, again, they turn over into the world of addiction. And one of the early problems that individuals will always face going through addiction is the actual understanding of coming to terms with it. In other words, there's a denial level that I can control it. There's no issue here. I'm doing okay. Everything is okay. One of the first terms, if you ever hear this from your loved one, when they say, I have to control or I will control what I'm doing, the minute those words are stated, that's when you know they're already out of control. Because we don't try to control something that's a natural or innate process in us. If I have a glass of water in the morning, I'm not trying to control how much I'm going to drink of that water. I'll drink until I'm satisfied and and then it'll be done, in a sense. The same with any other thing that we do in our lives. When you are trying to control something, that's where that term means that you are already out of control with that particular item or that thing that you're trying to change. So with that being said, individuals in early recovery, they're trying to protect their addiction because they know that this is a lifeline for them. For the most part, when individuals have crossed over from that dependency into addiction, depending on how far they are down the line with this, for the most part, they're not having any fun anymore. That that high is long gone. That that buzz, the initial buzz, that the original euphoria that they had been chasing for a long time, which created the state change here, that has been long gone. Right now, they're just maintaining a balance so that they don't feel horrible. In other words, that they're trying to just keep out of pain. And when they're in addiction throws, that's usually one of the first things that'll happen is they'll cross over into an area where if they don't do what they're doing, they are going to encompass pain in their lives. And that's one thing that they want to try to avoid and what they're trying to stop. Like any of us, if, if you have a certain pain, you're going to do whatever it takes to avoid that. Addiction is no different because they're doing the same exact thing and they're trying their best to maintain a balance and a semblance of of normalcy to some degree, depending again on where they are on that journey in addiction. So denial is a big piece to this and a lot of families struggle with this because they can clearly see very self-evident what their loved one is actually breaking apart and starting to fall apart in front of them. And they see this going on and the challenge is, is that they know there's something wrong But the individual who is struggling with the addiction is still in that denial state. They're still seeing things in the rose-colored glasses they choose to see it. Or in many cases, it's not even a rose-colored glasses. It's just that they don't want to face it. It's a it's a process of, you know, the term tacit of approval. You know something is not right, should be done, but you're not doing it regardless, even though you know better. And that process is happening in early addiction because they're trying to still protect their addiction. And again, they're going to do whatever it takes to avoid having to confront them themselves with this. So what are some things that you can do? Well, first, very there's three terms we're going to talk about, and then we're going to discuss a few other things. But the first thing is that is to have empathy with them, first of all. Try to put yourself in their shoes. And I understand that many people cannot get or relate to somebody struggling with a particular addiction because they may never have had that experience before, and most people have not. But try to put yourself in the shoes of them having an issue that they can't control and is creating havoc pain and misery, and a lot of personal distrust within their own lives, in a sense. In other words, they're not even trusting their own decisions. And if you can look at somebody who's really struggling like that and try to just at least empathize with them, and that's the first word we're talking about, empathize, and you want empathy. You're trying to give them an opportunity to be able to change, and you're being there for them, but you want to see 
where they're coming from and you're putting yourself in their shoes to the best of your ability. And when you're able to do that and look at the world through their lens, for the most part, you can at least appreciate the challenges that they're facing and the difficulty it is to cross over from an addiction into an early recovery. Again, depending on the addiction, the substance that they're using, and of course, the length of time that's been dealing with the addiction. The next is something that we talk a lot about here at Tiger Resilience and actually what our whole entire program is based on and this YouTube channel is education. Teaching and understanding what is going on with addiction. What does that do to the individual? What is the specific substance they're using? Because there are different behaviors that even though there's an overlap, but there are different characteristics of behaviors that relate to different substances. Somebody who's dealing with a methamphetamine addiction versus an opioid addiction versus a cannabis addiction versus an alcohol addiction. Uh, the, there's very different similar, very different pieces to that as well as similarities in a sense, but the differences are very important to understand because those characteristics are part of what you'll need to do to help work with your individual, your loved one, to help win them over through influence to get into recovery. But the process is that you need to understand first what's going on with that particular substance, with that particular addiction. The other educational piece is, is understanding the behaviors. Why do they do what they do? Why is this about they don't love me or they don't care for me? And again, this is nothing to do with caring for somebody. This has nothing to do with who you are as a person. They are not doing this out of spite and hurt to someone else. More so, it's to themselves. And the challenge is for them, they can't identify anything other than that pain and just trying to keep out of it. So they're, though, so it's not that they don't care or love you. It's just that that's not in front of their priority right now because right now they're in the throes of addiction. And that is all that they can think about. That's a 24-7 job. And I'll tell you, the pay sucks honestly. So somebody struggling with that, it's a real big challenge. So having education is for you to understand exactly what they're going through. What is the process of that particular addiction? What does that do? What are some of the behaviors that they are exhibiting? And what are some of the behaviors that you need to be aware of? Because that's important. There are certain behaviors based on the substance that they're using. A lot of illicit behaviors are taking activities that are going on when somebody's using an illicit substance, for instance, you know, methamphetamine or specific opioids that they're getting from the street, which means there's a lot of things that can be characteristically going on with your individual, even though they may have always been a good person, they're getting into a world where not necessarily all the right people and the best people are going to be in part of it. So in a sense, they may be involved with some individuals that you may consider a little bit subject and you may be a little bit concerned with. So that's why the education piece is imperative for you to do. And then the next thing after that, the third piece, really big, is for you to have understanding and compassion, to give them unconditional love and appreciation for who they are as a person. Now, let me explain because I've had some people talk to me about this and, and in early recovery, and I've had individuals who have gone through the addiction cycle and said, you know, I, I didn't need unconditional love. I needed to have some structure. And this is not what I'm referring to, where it's just some carte blanche where you can just do whatever you want to do. So what I mean by unconditional love is that the individual who is struggling with the addiction, that person who they are in here, that person inside, their, their soul's code, that personal constitution, the individual who you know is in there, is still there. And that's where I'm talking about the unconditional love and caring. The behaviors which are exhibited as a result of the addiction are not the unconditional love, that's the behaviors. So remember, addiction is a behavior and it's a repetitive behavior that's maintained in order to maintain the addiction. But who that person is inside of here is not necessarily a reflection of an addiction at all. And in most cases, it never is. Because that person in here, when they come out and into recovery, they're back to the normal person they used to be. As many of you who are struggling with this uh, and know what it's like when you have a loved one dealing with an addiction, they change. It's, it's like a personality change. You know, a new person has taken over. That's not the case necessarily that they have changed in here. It's a behavior. Addiction is a behavior and those behaviors shift. So having the unconditional love is for the individual person in here. 
But with unconditional love, you will have to have boundaries. Boundaries are those gates. The, the, these are the walls that you will put up where there will be consequences for choice. Every one of us is free to choose what we want to do. A fantastic gift that we're all given in life is the freedom of choice. The thing we're not given with choice is the freedom of consequence. Consequences will follow every choice. So creating boundaries for your loved one, having systematic and serious structured boundaries still allows you to have unconditional love for your loved one without putting yourself or your family and your other loved ones in harm's way. And that's an imperative. That's a major part of this early recovery when somebody's still in denial dealing with their addiction. And especially in the denial stage, you want to have these boundaries put up because this is where you know they're not going to be able to drag you into that world. Again, if they're dealing with something illicit and criminal activity, potentially, I'm not saying everyone does do that, but there are many elements that do require that aspect of it. Having that and knowing that now, those boundaries will help protect you and your family. So those three, three points that I really want to emphasize is first, to have empathy. Put yourself in their shoes and what would that hardship be like? And at least try to identify to the best of your ability what they're dealing with in that challenge. And the second is educate yourself. One of the main priorities of our program here in Tiger Resilience Addiction Solutions, including our website, is we offer online educational programs specifically to teach and educate individuals who have a loved one so that they understand what's going on. From a very practical term, I'm not going to discuss clinical language, and in our YouTube channels, we don't discuss all the academic and the uh, pharmacological and clinical languages that are used in substance use treatment. I talk about this in a very pragmatic way very practical way so that you understand exactly what it is because that's how i understand best i like to keep things as simple as possible and make it so we can all comprehend it and then the third piece again is have unconditional love for the individual in who they are again in here because remember this state change from the substance use up here that change itself is what's creating the new behaviors and that's what seems like the dr jekyll mr hyde personality shift but the person who you care for and love is still inside of here so that's where the unconditional love is but with that being said you will have to create boundaries and if you come visit us at tiger resilience you will find that we have a program that discusses how do families best protect themselves that includes learning all about setting up boundaries that are appropriate and still supportive because you're end of the, at the end of the day your role and goal is to help guide them into treatment you cannot change people but you have a power of influence that is second to none and you're slow methodical daily diligence into working on that influence will help your loved one see the light and make that shift so so the three points once again just to re-emphasize is the empathy knowing and having to be in their shoes two is the education you don't know what you don't know until you know it so here's the opportunity for you to learn it and then third is of course having the unconditional love for them but having boundaries in place so if you can follow those three things, you'll be able to successfully start dealing with the challenges of denial and slowly but surely be able to help influence your loved one who is struggling with this challenging addiction. I would like to thank you once again for taking time out of your busy day and your busy schedule to review this video. If you'd like to learn more about what we do here on our educational and treatment programs and what we do to assist family members and friends and loved ones, as well as the individual struggling with addiction, please consider subscribing to our channel or at least like this video so we can pay this forward to other families who are going through similar struggles as yourself. You know, this can and will be a problem that can be solved. There's a solution to everything. And I know that if you stay the course and if you continue to learn about what's going on with your loved one and you stay an active participant in their lives, you can and will make a difference for them. My name is Bernie from Tiger Resilience Addiction Solutions, where we are here to help family members and friends who have a loved one struggling with addictions. Once again, I thank you for your time. and I look forward to speaking with you again in the next video.